Hey, how are you? Well, I got a great response on Tuesday's video. Thank you everybody for leaving a comment on Facebook and taking a guess at the mystery wood species. And a couple of people got it right, four people, and their names are Frank M, Tis Time for Tea, Kurt Boyer, and Jeremy Urban. And the correct answer is poplar, but it's thermally modified poplar. Some people refer to it as baked poplar. And basically, the wood is cooked. Uh, I'm not sure at what temperature, but the idea is that it becomes this nice brown color through and through. And I think a lot of people use it as a substitute for walnut. And that's probably what I'll do. I'll probably make a few frames out of this. Uh, that's one thing that I do a lot of, if you don't know. I make frames almost every week and I'm making frames right now. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I I'm looking forward to working with the material. Uh, another thing about this wood, uh, apparently because uh, something happens to the cells when the wood is heated up, that you can now use it as an exterior wood. Now I don't really know much about that. I do know that uh, in the past I've always avoided using poplar outside. So that's something that I look forward to learning a little bit more about. So I made the model yesterday for the chairs I'll be building next week. And the design is based on a photograph that my client found online. I don't know who the designer is, but I've changed the design uh, really just a little bit. And the main change is the original chair is all three-quarter inch plywood. And I'm going to make the back out of three-quarter inch walnut. The seat will be three-quarter inch walnut. And the, the main support here, the base, will be eight-quarter zebra wood. And I've added this sliding dado joint. Now, I shot some video yesterday while I was building the model. And when I finished, I realized I really made kind of a dumb mistake. So let's take a look at the video, then I'll tell you about it. I just finished making one side of the chair's bottom support and the way this is going to work is the chair's back support will slide down this groove and that will steady the chair on the floor. Now to make the model all I had to do was simply nail some half inch plywood on both sides of this three quarter inch MDF but when I make the chair out of solid wood, I'll need to remove this material using a router. To build the base of the chair, I've sandwiched a piece of three quarter inch MDF in between two pieces of half inch MDF. And what I did was screw two pieces of half inch MDF together, cut this angle, which happens to be uh, just about eight degrees using a straight line rip jig and the circular saw. Now I'm going to attach the half inch MDF to the three quarter inch core keeping it flush at the bottom, front, and top. And then I'll use a 3 quarter inch spacer and attach the back. I want the half inch MDF in the back here to be flush with the 3 quarter inch core. So I'll cut most of this off using the bandsaw, and then I'll clean the rest of it up using a flush cut bit in the router. I'm working on the back of the chair now, and I've cut two pieces that measure eight inches by 40 inches, and I've cut an eight degree angle on the foot of the chair. Now I've cut all of the pieces a little bit oversized with the idea that I can cut them to size or what looks best once I see the chair assembled. I'll cut an eight degree angle on a three quarter inch filler strip and then I'll join the two sides and the filler strip together.
Well, it turns out that the chair is actually really pretty comfortable, and, and I like the way it looks, but I won't be able to use it because I made the model out of MDF, and there's no structural integrity to MDF. So if I had made it out of plywood, I could have used the chair up in my studio, and really in a perfect world, it, I think it would look really good made out of Baltic birch plywood. And this filler strip here, if I had made this out of uh, some kind of a dark wood like a walnut, well, that would have been kind of a nice contrast and a, and a good design element. But, you know, maybe next time, what, really, what can you do? But I was, I was kind of annoyed with myself about this. Now, I wanted to give credit to Ben Brown for guessing the mystery wood. He guessed uh, a thermally modified wood, but he guessed pine, so eh, it's really close enough. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Well, I'm back. I, I showed my wife the video last night, and her first question was, well, what was the mistake? So maybe I wasn't clear enough. Uh, the big mistake was I should have made the model out of plywood for two reasons, really. And one is if I made the model out of plywood, well, then I could have used the chair. Maybe I could have sold the chair or even given the chair away on my website. Uh, but now, really, I, there's not going to be much to do with this model once I finish using it for building the actual chairs. And two, if I had used plywood, well then the leftover material would have been a lot more useful to me than this MDF will be. And eventually I'll come up with some kind of use for the leftover MDF, but it'll take me some time and in the meantime I'll have to store it. So uh, if you didn't, if that was a little unclear, that was the big mistake. I should have built the, the model out of plywood. And I guess that's it. Have a great weekend. I'll see you soon.